Hello everyone, hope all is well and welcome back. So in today's video, I'm going to be doing a full face of first impressions. I have a lot of goodies here that I'm super, super excited about. I think I'm most excited about the new Nude Sticks plush paints. And I tried them all on yesterday on my lips and cheeks and holy moly, is the formula ever unique? But I'm gonna get into that more later in the video. I also have the new Fenty mascara the Milk Moisturizer, the new Pat McGrath palette, but I believe this is for Chinese New Year. The packaging is like out of this world beautiful. And I have a few other things that I'm really, really excited about. So before we get into it, I would love for you to subscribe if you aren't already. It would mean so much to me and let's get to it. So I'm first gonna add a little bit of moisturizer and I'm going to be using the Milk Vegan Milk Moisturizer. I've had this for a few weeks and I've been testing it out and um, honestly, like when you first apply it, it feels so amazing and so hydrating, but it's one of those moisturizers that that feeling leaves really quickly. So I find that it is really good to wear under makeup, but for like a nightly moisturizer and things like that, it's, it's not it. I usually do have an oilier skin type, but lately since it's so cold here in Alberta, I have more of like a normal skin type right now. For my primer, I'm gonna go in with the Lila B Aglow Priming Oil. I'm so excited about this. They added two new products to their Aglow line. I absolutely love their Aglow Face Mist. I haven't tried the priming oil yet, but I have been absolutely in love with the Lila B Aglow Cleansing Butter. This is the first I always tighten the lid so freaking much on my products. I don't know why. Like, who do you think is going to go in there? It's just me. I've been using this cleansing oil to remove my makeup ever since I received it. I am mind blown with how well this one works. I've never really loved a cleansing oil. They always kind of work the same. I've tried many. I've tried all the Shuomera ones, the Huda Beauty one, and as well as like the 4-3 one. So all different price ranges, but this one is the most effective. It breaks down my makeup so easily. It destroys mascara and the House of Lashes lash glue, which if you use that one, you know how hard it is to get off your lashes. This just like makes it fall right off. It's amazing. So I have high hopes for this product as well. I have a little info card about this right here. It's a three-in-one serum, moisturizer, and primer. It's fast absorbing, silicone free primer preps skin for long lasting makeup wear. Nutrient rich trio of oil soften, smooth, and comfort skin infused with plant extracts to improve skin firmness, texture, and tone. It's gonna create a smooth, flawless canvas and give your skin the perfect dose of nourishment and a fresh face glow. So this sounds amazing. This smells so beautiful. It is very oily. I think I should have went in with a half pump. It smells like lavender, which I absolutely love lavender. It's such a comforting scent to me. For my foundations, I only have this one that's new to me. I don't think it's gonna work though because it seems like it's gonna be a little bit too light for me. So I might have to go into one that I previously loved. Plus this is a matte and full coverage foundation. So it is gonna be very light compared to my skin tone. So I'm just gonna be using one that I previously loved since that one's a little bit too light for me. I'm just gonna go in with a good old favorite of mine, the Ilia True Skin Serum Foundation, just because I know and love this one. This Lila B Priming Oil under the Ilia Foundation just made me look so do we. <laughs> I'm really digging it though. I have two concealers here. I've never tried the Fenty Beauty one, neither the Power Play, and I feel like the Fenty one is a little bit better for where my skin tone's at. This is the Fenty Beauty Pro Filter Concealer in the shade 210. I haven't really seen anyone talk about this concealer either. How Have you guys tried it? I would love to know your thoughts. I'm just gonna blend that out with my Beauty Blender. This might not be the best concealer choice for the complexion products I previously used since I believe this one is a little bit more matte. Let me check. It's a matte and full coverage concealer. So I don't know if it's gonna be like the best match for this super dewy base that we have going on, but maybe that priming oil will kind of seep through and make this a little bit more like a natural finish. Only time will tell. I'm gonna add a little bit more here because I have like a little bit of blue shining through. Add right there. 
I'm just gonna let that concealer set a little bit, give it a chance to kind of set and do its thing, and then I'll see the finish and things, and see if I wanna put a little bit of powder right under the eye where I have my little lines, but we shall see. I sadly don't have a new bronzer, but I'm gonna be going in with my Fenty Beauty in the Sun. I'm like determined to finish this one up. I'm so close to hitting pan, I can see both pan and dents in there. So I'm gonna be blending it out with the Nabla Cheek Shaper brush. Now I wanna check up on the concealer since it's had a chance to kind of settle. I'll show you guys what it looks like up close. It's a little bit texture enhancing and it is settling a little bit in there. So I'm gonna to have to set it with a little bit of powder, but I don't really love how it's enhancing my texture right around here. I don't really see that with other concealers. It's not horrible, but not the best. Not my favorite, I guess. I'm gonna blend the settled lines out a little bit first then quickly go in with some powder. I'm using the By Terry powder. This powder isn't my favorite. I do prefer the Milk one a lot more, but this one is very blurring. So I'm hoping that it will blur that texture that the Fenty one has enhanced. So I'm just gonna take it a little bit further out than I usually would. So I'm gonna leave that on for about a minute um, while I do my brows, and I don't have any new brow products, sadly. So I will be right back. So now I'm gonna just wipe that away. Yeah, that really smoothened out that texture it kind of enhanced, so that's good. It's just looking slightly mismatched from the rest of my face, but that's okay, I'm just gonna go with it. Now moving on to highlight, I'm gonna be using this one from ColourPop. It's the Pressed Illuminizer in the shade Champagne Bubbles. I used the liquid version in one of my recent videos and I absolutely loved it. So I'm curious to see what the pressed formula is like. And they also came out with brushes specifically for each product and the number is F24. It has a very intense scent. I can't pinpoint what it smells like, but it's, it's smelly all right. Kind of first paint it down. So I paint that on and then I do little circles. I kind of flip the brush so I go in with the clean side so I don't distribute more. It doesn't look glittery on the swatch, but once you blend it onto the face, the particles kind of disperse. It's not so even, unless if you maybe have to like wear a lot of it so it's kind of more even. Yeah, this is definitely not it for me. I don't like this. I much prefer the liquid version. This one is just really not it. Let me zoom you guys up so you can see hopefully. Do you see how it's kind of like uneven? It, it truly does look like a bunch of glitter on my face, which is not very glittery. It's just very flecky, I guess. I don't think I'm gonna add blush right now because I'm going to be using one of the Nude Sticks plush paints. Since they are multi-use products, you can use them on your eyes, lips, and cheeks. But for right now, I'm gonna move on to the eyes and I'm gonna be opening up this beautiful, beautiful palette from Pat McGrath. This definitely isn't the most unique palette, I would say. In my opinion, I definitely am more drawn towards her bigger palettes, like the Mothership um, 5 and 6. Those are two of my favorites. But this is a really nice everyday palette, because you get those nice everyday browns, and then you can switch up the shimmer, whatever you're feeling like. If you're someone who has self-control for not buying every palette that comes out, this one would be a good one if you just wear these tones. I think I'm going to be starting off with oh uh, no, what am I doing? This shade right here in the crease, just to define it a little bit. I'm going to take a smaller brush to define the crease even more. This is a Smith 230 brush. This formulation is so beautiful, but the color is not really unique. I'm gonna take this brush. This is a blank canvas E41 brush, and I'm gonna be dipping into this kind of plummy brown shade, and I'm going to start building that up on the outer corner.
that builds up beautifully. I'm not gonna dip into some shimmers. I wanna use a few of these shimmers. I wanna try this one, this one, and this one for the inner corner. So I'm first gonna take the most pink shade, this one right here on my finger. It's really pretty. And I'm gonna place that in the middle. I'm gonna take this shade right here So I'm going to just dampen this Dose of Colors detailing brush with some Mist and Fix. I want it to be a little bit more intense right on the mobile lid. I'm just going to take a blend, this blending brush we were working with a little bit earlier just to kind of blend the edges of the shimmers so they just blend into each other nicely. Now moving on to the lower lash line, I'm going to be taking this deep brown once again with this Fenty Beauty Precision brush. And I'm just going to dip into the lighter brown that we used in the crease just to kind of finish off right here. One thing that's kind of annoying with this palette is that you, you can't like really leave it open or else it kind of just like shuts. So every time you dip into a shade, it kind of closes again. And I don't want to like break the palette by like bending it backwards so that's a little bit aggravating and then I'm just gonna take my finger with this lightest shade right here for the inner corner and brow bone highlight I love a good inner corner highlight and that one's so pretty I'm gonna quickly catch this eye up and I will be right back now I'm gonna try out the new Fenty mascara this is the full frontal mascara it says that it's a volume lift and curl mascara so I'm excited to try that out the wand is really cool it looks like it's very thick but then you flip it to the side and it turns thin so I think this is gonna be really great to get into trickier areas of the eyelashes and really grab onto everything and really make them voluminous and curly at the same time So here's two layers of that mascara, and holy smokes, does it ever make my lashes look amazing. It really does give a lot of volume to your lashes. I can't believe how many lashes I look like I have on my, on the bottom. Made my lashes look incredible. I'm gonna have to continue testing this out to see if it like crumbles or smudges or anything like that. But off the bat, this is stunning. Now let's move on to the lips and the blush. I'm really excited about this product that Nude Sticks just released. The tones that they released look absolutely beautiful and so up my alley. So I want to do like a little bit of a swatch montage of each shade, but let's get into the swatches. <laughs> Wow, I wasn't expecting to love so many shades. While I was swatching them on my lips, I put aside the ones that I loved. I love almost all of them. This is the only one that I didn't super love, just because the color is super, super neon, and I don't think that looks great on me. These are some really beautiful nudes. I feel like these hit every single one of my nude lip dreams. I'm gonna go with this one right here. This is Saint Tropez. It's like the perfect my lips but better shade. And it's a little bit more of a pinky one, so I think it looks really great with the tones on the eyes. And I'm also going to use it as my blush. I'm going to start off with like two little streaks of that first and just blend it up with my finger. I 
They're a really unique formula. Once they're on, they just look like your natural lip color. They're super soft. They almost feel very velvety on the lips. They're like, it's very slick, like a very slippery feeling. It's really interesting. And it is very blurring when they're on the cheeks. So far, I'm really, really excited about these. Not only are the shades so beautiful, but the formulation is so stunning. I'm gonna add more blush because I love blush. These blend out very seamlessly on the cheeks. That's really nice. Can't forget about my nose. I'm not usually into matte lip colors, but these ones just feel so nice and slick. Like they feel so slippery. I don't know, I don't know how to describe it. I haven't felt any lip products like this ever. Here is the final look. I absolutely love how this look turned out. I think it's like the perfect Valentine's Day look if you want to be a little bit more on theme with the little pink highlights. I think this is super cute. So now I'm going to get into my final thoughts about each product. I'm first going to start off with the ones I absolutely loved and I'm really excited to continue using. The first one is the Lila B Glow Priming Oil. Not only does it smell so beautiful, but it really made my skin look super hydrated and it also made it feel super hydrated. And I really like how it made my skin look super, super dewy. As you guys know, I love that look. So I'm really excited to continue trying this out, see if it's gonna work for my skin type and so on and so forth. But so far, super impressed, super excited. Next, I was really amazed by the Fenty Beauty Mascara. I can't believe how beautiful my lashes look. I really love the effect of this mascara. I think it makes them look so thick and it looks like I have so many lashes. I'm gonna continue to see if it's gonna smudge or whatnot, so I'll update you on that. Next, I'm super, super excited about the nude sticks. Oh my gosh. The plush paints, these are so stunning. I love multi-use products. I think they're so versatile. And I'm also very excited about the tones that they came out with. Usually in look collections, I only find one or two that I super love, but in this collection, I only found one that I don't absolutely love. That's super rare for me, and I love how I can use them on the eyes, lips, and cheeks. I think I'm gonna be using these plush paints like crazy. Next, my final favorite of today is the Golden Opulence palette from Pat McGrath. I will say this isn't the most unique palette she has ever created, but it is just like a nice go-to everyday palette if you like more rosy tones. I'm always blown away every time I use one of her mattes. I can't believe how easy to blend and pigmented they are. I just think this palette is very beautiful. The packaging is stunning. The only downside to me is that it closes every time you use it, so that's really annoying. But otherwise, the formulation is beautiful and I really love these colors. I stepped out of my norm again and I used pink tones and I absolutely love how it turned out. Next, moving on to the products that I didn't super love. The first one being the Milk Moisturizer. I don't know, it's just not the best. I'm always a little bit cautious when, when um, makeup brands come out with skincare. I know they do have a lot of skincare products, but none of them have ever made like such a drastic change to my skin. I do, my favorite skincare product that they do offer are the under eye cooling pads. Those are really awesome for like event days or if you have really puffy under eyes. For this, it's not my favorite. The packaging is out of this world though. It's really, really cute. I love the neon see-through kind of packaging. I don't know. I probably will still use this as an under makeup moisturizer because it does make everything go on smoothly and it's not so hydrating that it's gonna make my makeup slip and slide all day. For a nighttime moisturizer, I don't like it for that. It just rubs off and I wake up feeling very dehydrated. It's not the best for my skin type. Next Next, I was a little bit disappointed in this ColourPop pressed illuminizer. First of all, the packaging seems a little bit flimsy. I'm gonna try to show you what I mean. It's There's like a crack that's open on the side and it's like, it doesn't close properly. And it's also really hard to open, I don't understand. And I don't like the smell and the effect of it is just not good. Like I feel like it's one of those that you would really have to cake on to make it look even on your skin. And when you cake that on, then it's gonna really enhance texture and stuff. So this one is just like a no-go for me. I didn't like it. And I also didn't like the color of it. It was a little bit too yellow gold. And lastly, for the Fenty Beauty Concealer, Honestly, it's not my favorite. It doesn't look the best under the eyes. I'm gonna try this again though. I do wanna give it a few more tries before I make up my final decision, but my first impression on it is just eh, I don't really like it. But that is all for me today, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed today's video and found it helpful. If you did, please give it a like. It would help me out so much. I'll make sure to link everything I used in today's video in the description down below as always, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye.